am Ken Coat, CEO of Hydro Falls Incorporated at AutonomousShips.com. I'm a father, three children, fabulous, a very, very lucky Coast Guard veteran, engineer, and industrial designer. Thank you very much, Ray, Ray Valinga, for uh, service to the International Hydrofoil Society. And also, thanks very much for uh, asking me to speak. It's a real honor. And thank you guys very much for, for watching this. Um, it, it really uh, does my heart good. Also, I'm going to talk about our favorite subject, hydrofoils. So, hang in there with me, if you will. I founded Hydrofoils Incorporated in 1974. It's an interesting fact. Most boats go less than 30 miles an hour, and as a kid we were doing 100 miles an hour with small hydroplanes. Imagine if you had to drive down the road at 30 miles an hour in, in uh, 95 or the major highways. It just doesn't seem like it would work. I did not understand that. Why would they have to go so slow? When I was six years old, my dad put me in uh, Island Bardo's Tempo the sixth uh, hydroplane and uh, the ride of my life. I knew right then and there what I wanted to do. Um, so we built small hydroplanes, 12 footers, and uh, had some accidents. I ran into the dock, blew some over, fun. But my friend uh, actually blew one over and uh, lost an arm to a propeller. So I realized these things are not really toys, they, they can be dangerous. I wanted to be able to control the blowovers and also be able to turn because of my accident so we put a little variable incident foil on the inside skid fin. Skid fins on the left side on the race boats typically they go to a left hand turn. So um, that worked, it held it down at the beginning, held down the side, you could go flat out into a turn and uh, we put one on the other side and as kids we were pushing up on it and lifting the boat off the water. So we realized, you know what, if the boat's off the water, why do we have the wing deck in the center? I'll show you that in the middle office and realize what was going to happen with the cell phones. That was quite a while ago, 1981. Um, I was still very motivated and did throughout my uh, early years look for ways to better the hydroplanes so, uh, problems. And this is a purpose-built uh, small boat to, to achieve that, called it the DATVX Direct Angle Turning Vehicle Experimental. That was in... Uh, uh, a little bit before 70, I missed the date on that, I'm not good at dates, so we built a full-size version of it, you could get in, and uh, right away did 100 miles an hour with it. It was a very stable process. It was downlift in the hull, uplift in the foils, and the space in between for the waves to break, so it really worked. It was an interesting process. Uh, got a lot of publicity on that, people liked it, and uh, from that publicity we brought in another bunch of uh, projects, and also some interest from other groups and we got invited to the Naval Architects Marine Engineers Advanced Ships Conference in San Diego. Uh, brought the boat out there and demoed that for them. Uh, very interesting. I had lunch with my hero Bill Muncy out there. He was the announcer of that facility and uh, when we got back I wanted to see what it would really do and I wanted to get 140 out of it. I couldn't. I got it up to 136 which doesn't seem like much today's environment when the top fuel hydros can do close to 300 miles an hour. But back then, it, that was a lot, and uh, today this this record still stands. Nobody's coming even close to that with a hydrofoil. Um, it, that's a current Jersey speed skip. A lot of fun, they're a wild ride. It's like riding a camel, and they uh, bounce all over, and they do they do flip, they roll over. But uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, Jersey speed skips. While that was going on, this is a, um, uh, what's called the shovel nose hydroplane. A fellow named Ventnor up in uh, upper New Jersey was developing hydroplanes and boy they really took off. They were riding on the air, no longer on the water, just barely touching the water and leaps and bounds speed wise ahead of everybody else. So that process took off. Here's a modern hydroplane. You can see how it's running. It's literally up on the air. The tip of the um, skid fin is in the water and the tip of the prop, half of the prop and a little bit of rudder. But that's the way it's supposed to run. The downside of that is if you're flying without trim tabs, ailerons, flaps, it's very dangerous and they flip over. And they flip over since 1930 to 2020. They continue the same act, it's acceptable and uh, I never thought it was a good idea but the whole racing industry just says, oh that's what they do. Well, 
They, I don't think it's the proper way to do it. Uh, offshore catamarans, they're about 53 feet long today. And uh, the same problem. They got a wing deck and they got sponsons and uh, gusts of air or something, they flip over. Increased power, poor design, and you got that same accident. If you look at the center of the boat, that shaded area there, that's a wing deck. That's designed like any wing to push it up in the air. And the two sponsons are outside in the faded lines. Faster you go, the higher it goes. The fastest flying plane in the world, SR-71, happens to be the highest flying plane in the world because of speed. Speed's what gives it lift. And if you hit a little bit of a bump, a wave, or a gust of wind, boom, you're going over because you've got a wing without all the controls you need to fly with. This is a monohull, typically used for offshore racing, uh, a little bit older technology, still use them, and uh, interesting, good race, but very much like the uh, a Jersey Speed Skiffs. Now that's a fixed foil hydrofoil. Older design, but that's the way they look, and most of them today still look that way. They uh, act as uh, grabbers for container ships that are containers that have been lost in the ocean, or if you have a crab pot or a lobster pot, it's going to drag it along with you, or a boat that's happened to be sunk. So uh, in that respect, it's not a not a good vehicle. Also, they're deep water. You have to stop in deep water and slowly motor in because it, it, you can't raise those. These are uh, the kind that you can adjust. You can actually lift these up and fold them into the hull. The downside again is you got to stop in deep water, fold them, and and drive in. And they really haven't evolved much in probably 40 years. Uh, and they all operate. All those boats you just so operate with subcavitating hydrofoils. Difference is the upper left. Uh, section that you see that rendering is a uh, subcavitating hydrofoil very much like an airplane wing and the lower left is a super cavitating hydrofoil two totally different like subsonic and supersonic flight different animals the lower left is what we've been using right from the beginning and here's some of the boats that we've used uh, prototypes and such uh, various configurations various powers and uh, lots of fun over the years it got a lot of interest this is a uh, the people would ask, well, how fast can it really go without blowing it over? Well, we said, let's see. And we built rocket versions of that. We built electric versions of that. Here's a rocket boat. I'd love to go after Mach 1 on the water. By the way, Mach 1 has been done in the air. Chuck Yeager did it, one of my heroes, many years ago. Andy Green did it a few years back on land. It's never been done in the water. And if anybody has uh, deep pockets and wants to do that project with me, please email me, kencook at idevoil.com, and we'll, we'll make that happen. I would love to do that project. Uh, be the first to do Mach 1 on the water, and your name could be on the side of it. Uh, it's a neat project. There's the uh, stern view of it. So uh, this boat was never built, but it was um, commissioned by a fellow in the UK who wanted to go after the world's water ski speed record. And uh, I would love to do the project, but uh, he got married at the time. His wife, I guess, talked him out of the thing at the at the, uh, and I was not uh, unhappy at all about that because I think it's not not, not a wise thing to do. Be going extremely fast on water skis, but the boat's designed, the ski is designed, and uh, that's where it sits right now. Uh, these are autonomous ships. Um, I'd love to do this. High-speed container shipping is the right way to go. We can put 10 20 foot containers in there, that's the standard container worldwide, and uh, make some really high end uh, shipping autonomously. That's not out of the question because they're doing it right now in uh, Sweden and Norway, right from the ocean all the way up to the dock, autonomously. So the process is there, it's going to happen, uh, and, and it is happening sooner than we would think. So this boat that we're talking about to do all these, to achieve all these good things is uh, uh, the 50T. It's an inherently stable boat that would turn accurately with speed equal to road and rail. And it would also have that rail-like stability that I talk about. Once you're up at speed, those things are very accurate. The foils, they got a lot of water going over them. They're not going to move sideways. I believe you could put an elephant on the deck and it would work. And it's hands off flight. Over the years of doing this, we figured out a way that you cannot uh, uh, have to run it with any kind of computers. Uh, it's all balanced. It's a balanced system. It will get up to the height it's supposed to be, and it will stay there hands off. So it's very easy to operate. Here is the prototype running, and uh, it's a uh, 
I, I meant to put the date in there when we started that, but the, uh, it uses two highly reliable uh, marine gas turbines, the TF40, T55 turbines that are actually marinized, and uh, they use them in uh, rough, deep, shallow water. They can handle the, uh, the waves. They were put together by the military originally as helicopter engines, but modified again to be marine engines. And uh, this, this boat solves all these basic problems. The hull's above the waves, like that, and it's got uh, a positive lift on the foils to get it up there, and then negative lift on the hull to stop it from blowing over or kiting. Very stable ride, and it won't snag, we've got a patented system where it won't snag the ropes or logs or containers that you may run into out there. It won't bring them along like the other uh, straight down foils would. Here's an interesting process. We said we need to do this so you can motor right up to the dock from uh, out in the ocean all the way up to the dock. Fold in flight. Now you've seen wings fold on flight deck uh, aircraft, but they don't carry the load of the airplane. They land and then they fold. What we wanted to do is be able to fold on the way to the dock. And we have that system right now with Thompson and such good companies that allow the strength and the power to fold this while you're motoring up to the dock from the ocean. Uh, all the fuels and mechanicals and anything that could be possibly a, a fire damage are outside aircraft like in the uh, exchangeable engine modules and uh, nobody wants a fire on board a boat that's the last thing you want to do there's the modules outside they're a container they have a whole drive line the fuel is down in this section down here where the uh, V is and that's also happens to be the uh, area where the strut goes through. There's the engines, the T40, T55 engines, they say twice, and that's done by a Turbine Marine further modified for this application in Pompano Beach, terrific company, Turbine Marine, Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, and uh, if you had a problem with any of these, the redundancy is such that they're totally separate. You can run them, uh, the boat will easily run on one. There's massive power. So monoholes and catamarans are displacement holes. We know that. They push the water out of the way. It's a very heavy job. Seattle Times has restricted the, uh, the ferry from running because they make waves. They got them slowed down to 14 knots. We don't have to do that. Hydrofoils don't make wakes. They don't make uh, big things. A, a wake, really, is a sign of uh, wasted energy, wasted money, and uh, wasted en uh, lost speed for sure. Uh, we know that we provide a clean environment uh, and we're not upsetting the shoreline or the little sea creatures that are trying to grow up there. The American Bureau of Yachts, Coast Guard certified and uh, certainly more fuel efficient by about 30% than other monohulls or catamarans. And we're going to use all high sigma components throughout in these boats. So there's the 50T twin turbine hydrofoil, true 100 knot motor yacht. and. Uh, there's some interior renderings of what the deck layout could be that could be changed. Those seats have the light preservers built into them and uh, they're track mounted so you can change the interior out to be a, a vehicle that carries uh, materials in, instead of people. Rough renderings of the inside interior. Of course the customer, uh, client, first client can determine what they want in there and we can, we can match it. Um, reduced trip times means you have to, uh, you, you don't have to carry that much food on board because you're already there. Uh, you can carry more perishables and medical supplies and meat and fruit and vegetables because you're, you're there. And the big thing is it outruns or outskirts the weather. If you see bad weather in the ocean right now in another boat, uh, it, if you've been there and you probably have, it's, it's not the best spot in the world and if you go through it you realize you wonder what the heck am I doing here. Um, but. Uh, so you do, just like an airplane flying around a storm, you can just drive right around the bad storms because they're so quick, and uh, that's a real asset. Uh, there's a uh, military version to carry defense equipment, uh, whatever the military and Navy would, might want to carry, a very quick autonomous delivery for, a, uh, uh, again, 20 uh, container, a 20 foot, uh, 10 container, a top load vehicle. And there it is as a uh, autonomous shipping device. They will, by the way, the big one, the 150 foot, will use the GE LM2500 who's on board with us. GE is going to be part of this process and uh, they'll use two of those, uh, unlike the T40s, T50 engines. So coastal of coral, this, this uh, vehicle will intimidate the heck out of the bad guys right away, just the appearance of it. So Coast Guard, very good applications there. 
Uh, people say, well, it's, it's not proven. Well, it is proven. We've been doing it for 65 years, never blown a boat over. And uh, you can see these and other boats of ours running on the website at hydrofoil.com. Uh, and you can also get a hold of me for questions, Ken Cook at hydrofoil.com. And boy, thank you very much for taking the time to, to watch this. And if you sat through this, I really appreciate it. And you deserve to have some fun today. It's my favorite chicken. <coughs> Okay, thanks an awful lot. Appreciate it.